Houdini 21 drops with a massive list of updates, Google's Nano Banana brings incredible AI image consistency, and Blender 5.0 adds professional Aces 2.0 color support. It's Motion Mondays, and did you hear that the White House is establishing a national design studio? I can just imagine one of the recurring requests is gonna be, can you make the logo bigglier? While Blender 5.0 isn't dropping until around November 11th, one of the Blender developers just leaked some pretty big news that it's getting built-in Aces 2.0 color support. This is actually a pretty big deal if you're working in any professional pipeline. So Aces, that's Academy Color Encoding System, basically standardizes color management across your entire workflow. This integration is gonna be super useful for any freelancers and small studios who work on VFX or any pipelines that rely on ACES being a part of it. Bad news though, the update's gonna cost about 500 bucks. JK, it's free. Nick Maduka just dropped a free tool called Tileable Tools that's basically like having a supercharged Cinema 4D tile shader at your fingertips. It generates perfectly seamless tileable patterns that you can use for bump maps, 3D materials, or even 2D workflows. You have a lot of control over different shapes, dots, lines, hash grids, hexagons, even flakes for when you need to get that extra flaky texture detail. And when you got what you like, simply download the texture as a PNG. It's completely free. It'll be really interesting to see if Nick expands on this concept and adds even more texture types, because this is already looking to be a really handy tool for anyone doing 3D work. So be sure to send some love Nick's way and give him a follow on Instagram. His work is absolutely worth checking out. Now onto our School of Motion news roundup. We just hit a pretty massive milestone over 2,000 members in our all access communities. That's a lot of motion designers making cool stuff and getting better together every day. We've also critiqued just about 8,000 projects, which is pretty crazy to think about. Now, the big course news is that Rive Academy Volume 2 just dropped last week, adding over 11 hours of content to bring our total Rive training to almost 18 hours. So, if you want to learn Rive, we've basically got you covered. We also added this new coming soon page on our website where you can see everything we're working on. So new courses like After Effects, Unreal Engine, Substance Painter, Cavalry, and UI UX animation, you can see them all up there. Plus you'll notice up there we have exclusive events for every month for our all access members, including our next live stream that's on September 11th with the folks from Real Illusion talking all about digital doubles. Every month there's portfolio reviews, workshops, and other exclusive events. So be sure to sign up for all access today and be part of all the things happening here at School of Motion. Crea just announced real-time video generation and it's pretty crazy. It can generate at over 12 frames per second with controllable, consistent output. You start by literally bashing together basic shapes on the left side and you can just watch it generate video in real time on the right side of the panel. No wait, just immediate visual feedback as you mess around. Now, the consistency is really what got me. Usually with AI video tools, you get all sorts of weird artifacts and temporal issues, but this actually maintains coherence across frames. So you can use simple shapes, text prompts, or even stream your webcam to drive the video generation. And I could see using this webcam feature to drive character animation, basically using your body and face to control an avatar in real time. Now the level of control over video has been one of the biggest downsides of AI tools, but this feels like a really big step forward. You do have to join a wait list to get access, but if you're doing any type of motion graphics work, this tool can actually be pretty useful. And I know you love it, so here's some more AI news. And this one's actually really crazy. Google dropped a huge update to Gemini's image editor called Nano Banana. Yeah, that's the name. And the character consistency is actually, dare I say, bananas. <laughs> you can upload a photo of yourself and place it in any environment, add you in any costume, and it maintains that visual consistency across those images. You can also blend multiple photos together and do this multi-turn editing where you keep adding elements to the same image. Now I had to test this out with my Gus the Pug character, of course, and I rendered out a still from Cinema 4D, then went into Gemini and basically asked it to turn this pug into a food dog statue, a Tycho drummer, and much more. And the results were actually surprisingly super, super good. They all kept the same visual style from my original render. The Safari pug 
even swapped out the collar for a little handkerchief, which was crazy and super cute. Now, occasionally the consistency gets a little weird. The Tyco drummer for one lost some of the original style, but overall it gave me a lot of ideas for how I could adapt this character and apply different costumes and place it in different scenarios using that same base character. Now I can already see how I can use this as like a very personalized Pinterest, but uh, what do you think? Would you find this useful in your workflow? Let me know in the comments and you know, in the comments, if you just wanna let me know how your day is going, feel free. Now onto our cool works from around the interwebs. First up is this awesome piece from Adrian Valenzuela at AV Tone Studio. It's got amazing lighting, detailed textures, and the audio design is absolutely on point. The whole concept here revolves around a 3D printer and honestly, I hope 3D printers look this slick in the future. The level of detail and the way the light plays across the different surfaces is just next level work. Next we've got 2Fresh's updated 2025 reel and if you don't know 2Fresh, they're probably one of my favorite studios that are doing sports graphics. Their reel showcases their work for Fox NFL and NFL Network and it's just Houdini effects, particle sims, water smoke all with incredible lighting and composition. And they even threw in this little anime segment that kind of caught me off guard, super cool. These are the folks creating graphics that make watching sports make your inner motion designer really happy. Last but not least is Vuko's work for Google Next 2025. They handled the entire brand and motion identity for this conference. And it's all of these abstract shapes with clean gradients and smart color choices, the way they merge 2D and 3D elements together is super seamless. And you know, seeing their work displayed on the sphere in Vegas, yeah, that's, that's a good flex right there. Clay 4 dough just dropped and if I was using Blender, this would be an Insta buy. This add-on is everywhere on social media because it makes adding realistic clay textures to your models ridiculously easy. The new version has been rebuilt from the ground up using the new principled BSDF shader, so everything is physically correct now. The cool thing here is to use it, you don't have to have perfect UVs, you basically just apply it and it just works. The new version adds clay eyes with auto blinking, and there's also a pottery tool that looks like you're actually like spinning clay on a wheel, and the 3D tech support for when you need clay lettering. You can grab clay 4 dough on Superhive, and if you use the code claydo 25 you can get 25% off. The links will be in the description. Now onto another handy Blender add-on. Blender user Wolf just released a free damage add-on over at Superhive that allows you to add realistic wear and tear to your 3D objects. Now this is built using geometry nodes, so it gives you all the procedural control over how much damage you want to apply and wear. The system works really well around edges, which is where real world damage usually happens anyways. You can just drop this on your model and adjust the parameters and boom, there you go. It's perfect for destruction scenes, aging effects, or just adding that this object has seen some crap realism to your models. Lottie Fowles just launched a raster to vector converter that claims 99.9% .9 accuracy. 99.9% .9 of the time, it works every time. And so for anyone working in Illustrator, Rive, or Figma, this could be a massive time saver. So the tool uses AI to convert your raster images into scalable vector graphics. But what's really awesome is how it organizes everything. The AI automatically groups related elements and names layers intelligently, which is a big quality of life feature. It exports to SVG, Lottie, and other formats. Plus there's a Figma plugin so you can use it directly in your Figma workflow. Now on the site, you can get three free tries to test it out, and then you can unlock unlimited usage. For motion designers working with vector art or animation, this is a pretty incredibly useful tool. This week's School of Motion Student of the Week is Erica Zemka from Berlin, an aspiring motion designer who just joined our all access community and took AE Kickstart. She said it took her from zero to confident and that the TAs always gave her great feedback she could apply right away, even if it took her a few tries to get things right. Her work shows exactly what we love to see, smooth easing, clean curves, and great attention to eye trace. There's this moment where the arrow looks around first before making the decision. It just gives this whole piece a nice sense of personality, and you can really see that foundation of solid After Effects knowledge coming through in every frame. 
Now, if you want to check out more of Erica's work, you can follow her on Instagram. Congrats on all the awesome work and can't wait to see more work from you, Erica. After being teased for weeks, Houdini 21 just launched and this is a beefy update. The Kinney FX motion mixer is probably one of the standout features. Think of it like a DJ mixer, but for character animations. Instead of being locked to linear timelines, you can blend, layer, and rearrange different motion clips to create something completely new. So for motion designers who need characters to move in creative or unexpected ways, this is gonna save tons of time and open up a lot of new possibilities. Houdini's animation catalog gives you a library of pre-made motion clips that you can pull from, and the auto rig builder handles the technical rigging setup automatically, so you can focus on the fun part of making things move and not spend so much time setting up controls. The muscle simulation upgrades add realistic tissue movement with the new Otis solver, which is GPU accelerated for even faster results. VFX tools got major improvements. Tool, machine learning powered pyro upscaling, new vehicle destruction tools, and neural point surfaces for more detailed water effects. Copernicus now handles real-time texture generation with grunge maps and procedural surfaces. Now on top of that, they added Gaussian splat support and Solaris for live rendering and virtual set work. So this is the kind of update that really makes you remember why Houdini is one of the top 3D DCCs out there. Now throwing back to when I mentioned our September 11th live stream with Real Illusion, the company just announced Character Creator 5 with some major updates. The big addition is the Actor Mixer system that lends you blend traits from multiple character bases to create unique digital humans. So you can combine facial features, body types, and other characteristics to generate completely new characters instead of starting from scratch every time. They added HD Ultimate Morphs with 172 high definition morphs for realistic sculpting. Basically you can get abs in a single click without actually working out, which honestly sounds like my kind of fitness program. There's also a free 30 day trial, which is always nice for testing out workflow integration. These plugins do work with Maya, Blender, Unreal Engine, Unity, so it plays well with all existing pipelines. So for motion designers doing any kind of character work, this is definitely something you need to look into. And that is it for this week's Motion Mondays. You'll find links to all the things I talked about in the description and be sure to join our next all access exclusive workshop on September 11th. And I'll catch you next time, but if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna go Nana Banana me chilling on the beach somewhere. Cause that, that sounds pretty good right about now.